Now the reason why I bought this electric power window kit is because everything in my truck is manual. Here's the power supply lines for the window kit. Now I bought this item over eBay for $120. That's a pretty good deal to make your windows power windows. And for what I've seen, they can make any make and model to where you can have power windows. But I'm pretty sure you gotta fabricate little stuff here and there. But everything else is already pre-cut and pre-made. Each module has their own different wires. This one has two green ones and one white one. And this one over here has two green ones and one white one. And over here on this module is has different wires. This one has blue wires and one white wire. So it's pretty dummy proof. Now I also purchased the central locking system kit for my truck because my doors are also manual and with this kit I'm hoping it to make it a power locking system. Here are two remote controls that came in the kit and like in the other kit everything is already pre-made and pre-cut. Here's the module that you're going to be hooking up to, the power line supply with a fuse and here's the master cylinder. This master cylinder, all it's going to do is just go up and down. If this cylinder goes up, the other ones are going to go up. If it goes down, it, it goes down for all three other Now, this is going to be true for every manual window door. What you got to do is get a pick with a hook at the end to snap off this ring. With smaller cars, it's a little bit more difficult, so I suggest you get a paper clip, make a hook at the end, and snap it off. But tomatoes, tomatoes, you know, as long as it comes off, it's all good. Here I'm taking off the screws, one at the top, one in the middle, and two at the bottom. Now my door handle has a Torx bit screw, so I have to go get a Torx bit and pull it out with my screwdriver. Now here are the spindles and adapter for the windows. You have to put them on the windows and attach them with screws. Make sure you do this because if you don't attach them with the screws, they might fall off. And also you got to put a metal ring back there to make sure everything's good. Now it wouldn't hurt to have different type of sizes of self type of screws. It will make life a lot easier. Make sure you don't puncture any components. Now on this door, what I did is put some electrician tape to tie up the two poles together. It made it more sense on this door. But this is the actual component that you gotta use to make attachment of the two poles. As you can see here, it's tied on to some with some screws. One is to the locking mechanism and one is to the actuator. Here I made a hole on the metal and passed the wire through it just to make it a little bigger. And here I'm actually wiring everything up. Now to remember this, m me and my brother took two days to do this. My brother he does car audio system and I'm an electrician so it just tells you what kind of work is going to be ahead of you if you try this. Now. Here I'm going to check if the thing actually works. I'm going to get my Milwaukee 12 volt battery as you can see here. Now don't be scared. All you got to do is put one lead and the other lead inside one terminal. Doesn't matter where because it's just going to go up and down, up and down. So here I am installing the rain plastic cover back on the door. Now as you can see, I made a hole up there where the window is going to spin that. Make sure that nothing is in the way of that spinning spindle. If not, the plastic is going to get stuck on there and you're going to have a jammed door. Next, make sure you put every locking mechanism to each of the doors of your car. Make sure the nuts are nice and tight. You don't want them rattling. Same thing goes for your speaker. Make sure all the screws are nice and tight because you don't want them rattling after you're done with the job. Here I am installing this locking mechanism to this door and hand tightening these nuts. And here I have a lever on my hand that you have to install inside the locking mechanism. You know, you wanna have this inside the locking mechanism because if you don't have it, you're not gonna be able to open your door uh, from the inside. Now also make sure that none of the tabs are in the way of the components inside the door. On my driver's side door, I had to cut off one of the tabs. It was necessary. Here, I wired everything together. Green with green, blue with blue, and white with white. Then I just screw on this button to make my locking mechanism go up and down. And just pop in the cover.
Now I also bought a power inverter for my truck. This one costs forty dollars. I think it's more durable than the twenty dollar one, so that's why I bought it. Now here's the final result of all my work. Here's the driver side module control, and here's the passenger side module control with a cover on the spindle so you won't see it spin when the window's going up and down. Now as I told you all the locks are controlled by one master cylinder the one on the driver's side. Now if I push this lock down all the other locks on the truck is gonna go down as you can see. And for the windows as you can see my driver's side window is pretty good and then here's my passenger side window. Now for my power inverter I'm not going to use it much because it can mess up your alternator but it's a pretty good thing to have because sometimes you don't have power really I might just use it for my heat gun whenever I'm bending pipe PVC pipe you know and here I have another little gadget that gives me USB ports and more outlets. Now the way that I went on accomplishing this task is by removing the glove compartment box and checking what's behind the dash of my passenger side seat. Now you got to make sure there's no airbags and make sure that the screws are not going to puncture anything inside. And this is the modules for the power locks and for the power windows. And this is the power going to the power windows but I like to keep it disattached at night so it won't drain out my battery.